Now, what did we establish this morning? We looked at how to do all our differentiation for our inverse trig functions. Yeah. Oh, sorry guys, I forgot. Did I start it? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. I did that. Okay, cool. Now, therefore, this is a standard setup for once you get your hair wrapped around just the basic differentiation and chain rule, etc. How are you going to use it? Where are you going to apply it? Okay. Now, if you want, you can turn to question 12 so you can follow along with what I'm trying to get at. It's a series of show questions. Okay, so three show parts. But you don't need to read it for me to explain basically what's going on. Here, up here, is a picture on a wall. Okay, so let me put it in another color. Up here, is a picture hanging up some distance raised on the wall. Okay. Over there at E is some observer, that's you, okay? And you're looking at the picture. The question simply is, where we're headed is, what is the best viewing angle for the picture? What's the best viewing angle, okay? And you think about this, right? If you are right here, like directly beneath the picture, you can't see the picture. Does that make sense? Like you're looking up and it's like this squashed up thing, okay? But the further and further you get away, if you get really, really far away, that angle theta, which is your viewing angle, is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Does that make sense? If you're super, super far away, well, just imagine, the picture is going to be very, very tiny. So, not a very good viewing angle. So therefore, right at the wall, at the base of the wall where the picture is, not a good viewing angle. Really, really far away, that's just getting worse and worse progressively. So somewhere in between here, there's a sweet spot, okay? And the mathematician's name for a sweet spot is a maximum, okay? So that's what we're looking for, right? And here's part A. I haven't, um, I've just actually written it up with this one thing that's missing from it because there's not too much here. This is just getting the geometry together. They want us to show this result here. That theta is equal to that. So essentially, they're trying to set up, I've got two quantities that are varying in relation to each other, right? I've got the viewing angle, theta, Right? And then I've got the distance away from the wall, or from the base of the wall, I should say. And that's x. Right? You can see x can get bigger or smaller. So what they're trying to set up, being that these two quantities are related to each other, they want this as a function of this. Right? What will my angle be based on how far away I am? So that's all they're trying to set up. And you can see here there's just some simple right angle triangle trig involved. Um, you look at this right angle triangle here at the bottom, you like tan is opposite on adjacent, like so. Okay. So you take tan inverse just to get the angle by itself. Okay. Once you combine that, the, the result just kind of slaps you in the face. But here's my question. I'm actually missing something. I, I think this answer would be fine, but we know a little better than this, right? From line one to line two. And then I repeat the exact same logic from line three to line four, okay? So therefore, if I just focus on the first one, I'll be fine. From line one to line two, what have I done to both sides? What have I done? I have taken tan inverse of both sides, correct? Okay. So I've actually said something, sorry, I've implied something that I have not said, right? Over there on the right hand side, sure enough, tan inverse of three on x is tan inverse, 3 over on x. But on the left hand side, I've missed something out. Do you notice that? I actually should really say this. Do you agree with that? Okay. Now I just kind of artfully dodged saying that it happens to be correct in this case. But the question is, why? Why can I just skip doing this? We've seen even just with taking square and taking the square root, you can't just assume that an inverse, our function and its inverse are just going to neatly cancel each other out. I can do this, but the question is why? Yeah. Because tan inverse has, a, um, has no restrictions on the x. Structure. Okay, so firstly, tan, tan inverse has... can accept any angle in it, right? Like when we thought about, uh, sorry, I should have said we can accept any domain, right? When we think about what tan inverse looks like, does it have the same problem that sine inverse and cos inverse have? He just kind of goes forever, okay? However, that's actually not the problem that we're experiencing here, right? That would be a thumbs up. That would be the thing we need to know if what we were looking at was this. This is one of the first ones we looked at. Do you remember? We looked at sine, sine inverse, cos, cos inverse, and tan, tan inverse, right? Do you remember that? They all look like x, with the exception of uh, domain restricted, with the exception of this one, which goes on forever. That's what your point solves, okay? So it's true, but it's actually not relevant to this particular one, yeah, right on. Um, tan 
uh, sorry, the angle BEP is acute in this case, and as a result, um, it would like because it's within the domain that we found it to be X. So good. Okay, so you don't need to draw this, but I wonder how far you got with it last time. Do you remember when I showed you? <clears throat> When we have sine of sine inverse, cos of cos inverse, it's, it's all nice and neat. But when you have the inverse on the outside, you're doing that one second, you're doing this one first, right? Do you remember for sine inverse of sine, we got the weird, this weird guy. Do you remember this? Do you remember that guy, right? Does anyone, did anyone work out what the cos, of, cos inverse of cos one looked like? Yeah, it's very similar. It's very similar, but everything is up, right? Everything is between naught and Pi. Do you remember ooh, what's the? Hmm, is it this? I think it's this. It peaks when yeah. it's. Uh, it peaks when no, it's no, it's that, isn't it? Yeah. Is it that? Is it the second one I drew? Yeah. I think it's the so, second one. Uh, yeah. Someone check for me because I don't know off the top of my head. It peaks when the other graph is either trough. Yeah, sure. I think I think this is what I'm getting. Yeah. I think yeah. this is real. Yeah. Okay. Um, now the reason we should expect this is because you get the same y equals x portion but you only get it in the domain you're supposed to be. For cos inverse, that's naught to pi, okay? And that's why this is naught to pi as well, okay? Because that comes from the range restriction of cos inverse. Now, tan's the weirdest one. I don't know if anyone did. Tan inverse of tan. I'll show you what it looks like. It's weird. It looks like this. Okay. This is what tan inverse of tan looks like. And you can very, very easily verify this. Grab your calculator out now if you don't, um, if you haven't popped it out on your desk already. And just do something like say, this is, I'm contending, this is the tan inverse tan graph, right? Do tan inverse of tan of, oh, I don't know, say pi. How about pi? What's it going to tell you? It's going to tell you zero because what it's doing is this. Tan inverse of tan pi. What's tan pi? This is sine pi on cos pi, sine pi is zero. So this is then tan inverse of zero. And in the range of tan inverse, he's like, oh, the only angle that'll do that for you is zero. So that's why it hands you back zero. Doesn't hand you back pi, which you should put in. It hands you back zero. So that's why I am where I'm at. So therefore, look here. See how I just slightly substituted tan inverse tan of something? I just said, yeah, it's the something. Right? I was contending tan inverse of tan x equals x. That's what I did. Right? I just didn't make it explicit. But this is only true in one small part of the domain. Namely, yeah, from negative pi on 2 to pi on 2, not inclusive. Now here, I'm okay, I'm out of the woods because BEP is not just any angle. BEP is an angle in what kind of triangle? It's in a right angle triangle, which means the biggest it could possibly be, uh, this angle here, is acute. Okay? I even need to know that. It's not enough to be in a triangle. If you've got an angle in a triangle like this, say that's theta, okay, or that's BEP, that's kind of a problem, right? That's bigger than pi on 2. That's over here. That's outside the domain. So I need to know it's a right angle triangle. So really over here, if you want to be really correct, if you're following along with me, really you should say, I can say that line because... 0 is less than BP, which is less than pi on 2. Okay, There is a restriction, and it has to be, uh, it's not inclusive of boundaries either, because I actually have a triangle on a straight line. Okay.